Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome back. Today, join me as I prepare my altar for Yule, giving you ideas to decorate, teaching you the traditions of Yule and simple ideas to help you make the most of this season's energy. So sit back, relax and keep on watching. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome back to another Yule video. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I transformed my altar. It didn't always look this good, actually looked pretty disgraceful at the beginning. <laughs> also I'm going to be bringing you along with me whilst I make a few tools for the Yule season. I'm going to be making an entry into my Book of Shadows at the end all about Yule. I'm very excited to bring you along with me today. Let's start at the beginning because I don't think I'd cleaned my altar for gosh a couple of months and it was not looking too good and recently I've told you about the energy in my home and how I've just had to change it so much so that is something that was first on the agenda. So my mission was to completely cleanse and prepare my altar for Yule. Altars were set up to honour the evergreens and to give back to nature during the winter months. And to create mine, I first needed a clean slate with clear energy. So I started by emptying my altar ready to clean. A lot of dust and dirt had built up and to gather all of this I used my trusty mini broomstick that I created during Mabon and swept it away, mainly metaphorically because it doesn't work amazingly. I then cleansed and spritzed my altar with more of my cinnamon spray. This time I mixed it with lemon essential oil to get rid of any bacteria, giving it a big deep clean and getting into all the crevices and with each area feeling and seeing the energy lifting. I also decided to clean out my crystal cabinet. My crystals hadn't been cleansed in a few months, so I thought it was time. I had some dried rosemary, which I placed into my mini cauldron. Rosemary is an evergreen herb, and it is so good for its cleansing and detoxifying properties. I lit it and simply started cleansing my crystals in a well-ventilated room. Room. I placed each crystal over the smoke, cleansing one by one, and it was such a therapeutic activity. I try to do this every Sabbath with different forms of cleansing depending on what element is most powerful during that time. And if you decide to cleanse your crystals this time of year, cleansing with smoke or moon energy is quite powerful. And I was left with a space that felt much lighter and ready to start afresh. I started to place my crystals back into my cabinet and on my bottom shelf I placed crystals that were most powerful during Yule. Citrine is a great crystal to help us with success with new year goals and achievements and orange calcite will help us do the same. Carnelian can help ground us, especially if you cannot go outside much. And obsidian will banish negative energy. But traditionally, a bell was put in an altar to banish negative spirits. On my crystal triangle, I placed pyrite. This again brings luck and success to new goals and clear quartz that purifies the air and help us unlock our spirituality. I love hematite because it is grounding and helps anxiety. And lastly, adventuring will help aid good health over the winter period. 
As the winter solstice is a festival of the sun, candles completed a Yule altar, and different colours gave meaning to each aspect of the season. The green represents the evergreens and growth for the up-and-coming spring. The red represents the warmth of the sun, the strength within us to continue and new life coming back, and white represented the cold season and the pure air. Also, you could use yellow and gold candles to represent the sun's return. And for now, my altar was complete. So after I cleansed it all and put the crystals in, it was time for my favourite, most favourite part, adorning my altar in the gatherings I got from the wood. I gathered what my wood had to offer, but you needn't gather anything at all. You could bring inside potted evergreens or even make your very own altar yule tree. With my gatherings, firstly, I bottled up some nature for future rituals. Along with this, I bottled my favourite spices of the season, star anise and cinnamon sticks, as well as ground cinnamon. And I'll show you what I use that for later. The first thing I decorated with was holly. You will see holly at a Yule altar a lot, as on the day of the winter solstice, the holly king is at its most powerful. The Celtic legend tells us that the holly king represents the night and the oak king represents the day. So during Yule, the longest night, the holly king is at its most powerful position. But the oak king conquers the holly king, as now the days will begin to get longer. I then got to work with my gathered fur. Fur has great purification properties and if you have a real tree this season, you'll probably feel the benefits of this within your home. I wanted to adorn my cabinet with fur to surround it with positive energy. But not only that, I placed on top fur cones. Fur cones are again great for protection, but also the fur dye chakra and creativity, perfect for my altar space. I then started separating the needles from the fir branches. I wanted to dry the needles to be able to cleanse with later, but also I wanted to place a line of needles in front of my altar. Traditionally, a line or circle of pine needles would be placed in front or inside a hearth to protect the home so no negative spirits would enter past the line. And lastly, ivy. What's good about ivy is also its worst quality, and that is, it likes to smother things. It has the greatest will to survive and will cling and attach to things to protect itself and thrive. So, I wrapped the ivy around some of my sacred symbols and objects to protect and detoxify their energy. I even wrapped the ivy around my little nest and if you don't know what this nest is, it is where I put my offerings and I have a very special scene to make around this offering nest and the scene will be in honour of the fairies. Recently I splurged and got myself a little treat, two extra fairy friends, so I wanted to set a fun scene to capture their essence. The first thing I used was oranges. Oranges are great symbols of the sun and circular objects at your altar were said to encourage the sun to come back. They also radiate positivity, creativity and success. I made an orange waterfall. If you want to honour the sun in any ways, you could draw a picture, have items placed within a circle, have pictures of the sun or even a picture of yourself during summer when the sun is in full bloom. For my offerings, I placed chestnuts, but you could add anything that's in season, such as dried fruit, nuts, even fresh fruit, such as oranges and apples.
there you have it. It was so much fun to do. Of course, your altar can be completely different to mine. It's just me adapting the Yule Tide traditions in my own ways. The next thing I want to do, now my altar is actually complete, is do a few things at it because that's what I do. I do things at my altar, I don't just decorate it. <laughs> the first thing I want to do is actually make a small pouch for meditation. Meditating in winter, I've found, is actually a lot easier for me than other months because there's no rush. You kind of think about those trees, you think about they are in hibernation, everything is just still. For my brain, that works very, very well. I wanted to make a little meditation pouch in just this basic white pouch. Even though I look extremely extra, my practice is extremely easy and simple. So the first thing I'm going to be putting in the pouch is some fur and fur is really good for cleansing the air. I just think it would be a good thing to have whilst meditating, a cleansed fresh air around me. The next thing I'm going to be placing in is a hematite crystal. Like I mentioned before, hematite just really helps ground myself this time of year. That's something personally that I really like to put into my little pouch. Next, I'm going to be putting a little bit of cinnamon in here. Cinnamon can really help us unlock our spirituality and just helps us with our own spiritual path of enlightenment. So I'm going to be popping that in there too. And lastly, some star anise. I didn't realise this till recently, but star anise actually has third eye qualities and can help us with our intuition. So if you're doing a meditation that is perhaps working on your own intuition, maybe a guided meditation or a spirit animal meditation, having star anise nearby will really help you to unlock your third eye chakra and help you stay focused. So I love that. And it really is as simple as that. Also, I wanted to add into this video something that I'm very excited about and it's something that I have been gifted recently and it is from Witchbox. If you didn't know, Witchbox is a subscription box service and every month they send you a new box with a new theme. So if you're looking for something new to do in the new year, I would highly recommend this. The theme of this month's Witchbox is magical writing and everything within this month's witch box was to start this new journey and skill it included a little notebook to practice this new skill and magical items i'd never heard of before like a manifestation pen and instructions on how to put it all together To write with the pen, they included dragon's blood ink that was so glittery and beautiful. They always include sweet little crafts that can help you gain strength in your practice, like this cute creativity charm. and even includes a page for your book of shadows on how to write the Theban alphabet. A lovely magical bookmark and so many blue tiger's eye. These are to help improve concentration, enhance memory and focus for your new craft. I was so shocked by the last gift and I think it was my favorite of all, a brand new oh. feather pen. <laughs> I will leave the details for which box in the description box below for you. This is the fifth box I have now received and they just keep getting better. But now it's time to make a new entry into my book of shadows.
when I make an entry, the first thing I always do is make the pages look vintage. For this, I use a wet tea bag, usually one from the tea I just made. Whilst it dries, I solidify all the evidence I have on the subject in hand and look over my notes. I recheck facts in books I have and write down any information I may have missed. And when the pages are dry, it is time to leisurely write everything down. Yule is the time of the shortest day and longest night and marks the winter solstice when the sun is at its lowest in the sky. Yule is about the gratitude for the living that is around us, whether it be plants within the forest or the people that surround us. It is a time to give thanks, to give thanks for the circle of year that has passed, but also in finding beauty in the small things in the winter that can help protect us and our loved ones. It's about the one day, the shortest day, that may feel so dark, but holds a symbol of hope. The hope being that now, with each day, the days will grow longer, and slowly but surely, the sun will return. But whilst it remains dark, we honor the darkness, the stillness, that is the night, the moon, and the stars. The type of magic to be done now is simple and low key, using the elements of winter such as the moon, fire, ice and the evergreens to help. But above all else it is a time to care for yourself and a time to plan. Plan anything that you want to set yourself for next year. Now is a time of rest because when the leaves grow, so will we. Thank you for watching Enchanted Ones. All my love this Yule, Alwyn. Bloody hell. Oh no! <laughs> what the hell? Right, let's try that again. No! <laughs> oh. So I'm going to be bringing you along when I make a few kind of witchy things for me whilst I make a few witchy tools for the you. And I'm going to be bringing you along with me whilst I make a few tools for the you. Whilst I make a few tools for the. Four, mm. and I'm going to be bringing you along with me. This isn't working out. <laughs>